During World War II, Greece was partitioned by the Axis powers, by the Germans, the Italians, and the Bulgarians. But did you know that the Axis powers also put in place a Greek puppet government? This here is the story of the Greek collaborationist government, also known as the Hellenic State. Keep watching. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. And if you are new, I'm Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history on location. Like right now, I'm overlooking Athens. And if you find it interesting, well, consider subscribing. Hey, and if you want to support me additionally, um, so I can make better and cooler, more awesome trips like this, then go to my Patreon or PayPal page. The links are in the description. Let's start with the episode. In April, 1941, the German invasion of Greece began. Simultaneously, the Germans invaded Yugoslavia as well. The German divisions attacked from Bulgaria, crushing through the northern Metaxas line as Thessaloniki was taken on April 9th. Greek forces fighting in Albania found themselves surrounded. Other Greek defenders hurled back in panic. It gave the Allied troops little time to prepare their defenses as they were pushed back by the Germans. On the 27th of April, the Germans entered Athens and the swastika flag was raised on the Acropolis. The surrender document was signed on the 23rd of April 1941 in Thessaloniki. It was signed by a Greek general, Georgios Tsolakoglu. He had capitulated without Athens orders. Reasons he wanted to come to terms with the Germans was that he did not want the Italians to overrun his country. The plans for possible Italian annexation were shelled for after the war. For now, it had to be occupied. Greece was less important strategically, less contemptibly racially. The Germans had no long-term plans for the country and Hitler had already decided that a domestic puppet regime would be the least expensive drain on German energies and resources as the invasion of the Soviet Union came closer. General Tsolakoglu proclaimed that he was willing to serve the Germans. Tsolakoglu would lead the collaborationist government of Greece, known as the Hellenic State. As an officer in the Hellenic army, he had seen action in the Balkan Wars, the First World War, and the Greco-Turkish War. So Lakaglu's government contained six other inexperienced generals and civilians in the government were only chosen because of their connections. And on top of that, not many people, not many qualified personnel was willing to work for this collaborationist government since they expected the Germans would leave soon and this would leave them behind as traitors. Members of the new government were afraid that the Italians would take over large parts of the country. But that is exactly what happened. See, Hitler, he needed all his manpower for his invasion of the USSR. And therefore, in June 1941, large parts of Greece came under Italian administration. And as a result of this, there was a massive outcry because the hatred against the Italians was bigger than against the Germans. And this was because of the Greco-Italian War. War. The Axis did not officially recognize the new collaborationist government and that was because it proved to be very unstable. Um, it basically fell apart quickly due to infighting. I mean many Greeks held it already in low regard but especially when in June 1941 the Italians started to take over large parts of the country. But that was not the only problem because Eastern Macedonia and Western Thrace were allocated to Bulgaria. Bulgaria Bulgaria annexed these territories and on top of that expelled over 100,000 Greeks from the region. There was a massive outcry because of this. The remaining country had become a patchwork of Italian and German controlled territories and this would soon lead to disaster. So the Bulgarians, they annexed the acquired territories of Greece. For a moment, it seemed that the Italians were going to annex their acquired territories as well. But that did not happen. Needless to say, the collaborationist government was under strict Axis control. Two Axis plenipotentiaries, one German, one Italian, they decided which Greek officials could take part in this government. There was no rigid distinction between civil and military administration. This led to bureaucratic infighting. The stage was set for bureaucratic infighting of Byzantine complexity. Italians pitted against Germans. 
diplomats against generals. The Greeks trying to play one master off against the other. Even in the Third Reich, the realities of National Socialist administration were far removed from the smooth efficiency implied by the Führer principle. In Greece, the new order had brought nothing less than administrative chaos. If things weren't bad enough, Greece was on the brink of economic catastrophe due to the economic disruption as well as a large-scale military requisitioning that took place. This was because the Axis wanted the Greeks to cover the occupation costs. The end result was starvation. An estimated quarter of a million Greeks perished in the famine. In the future video, I'll cover the Greek famine in depth. Now we're going to look at how the collaborationist government dealt with it. Well, they didn't have the power to deal with it. See, most of the Greek grain came from remote areas and had to be transported to the cities. The Axis, they created roadblocks and confiscated much of the grain. At some point, the Greek collaborationist government started to send demobilized Greek soldiers to the farms to get the grain. But they often sided with the farmers who mistrusted the occupier, believing the grain would not go to their fellow countrymen, would be taken away by the occupier. And they had every right to believe that because that is what happened on a massive scale. But it also worsened the food crisis as the collaborationist government managed to collect very little. And on top of that, the distribution failed miserably because Greece had become a patchwork of areas under German or Italian control. So Lagerloo saw that full economic collapse was imminent. He was disillusioned. He wasn't able to prevent Greece from being dismembered. And now hundreds and thousands of Greeks were dying because of famine. He was dismissed and replaced by Konstantinos Logotetopoulos a university professor from the Athens Medical School. The conflict between the Greek collaborators and the Axis continued as the Axis refused to scale down their demands. According to a report, 95% of the Greek population was hostile to the Axis. As war progressed, the Germans needed more manpower for their factories. Some volunteered to work for the Germans, hoping for better living conditions. But many were already in ill health and didn't make it. The Germans then launched a civil mobilization program, but this led to protests. The authorities restored order and carried out brutal reprisals, but the program was shelved. In April 1943, Logos was replaced by Ioannis Rallas. He set up his own security force the security battalions. These units assisted with garrison duties and participated in anti-guerrilla operations. They later functioned as practical death squads. Rallis drove a wedge in the Greek resistance between the nationalist and communist factions. Meanwhile, the deportations of Greek Jews started. The Greek government expressed its unease to the Germans but was unable to stop the deportations. In October 1944, the Germans started to withdraw from Greece. Some collaborators joined them while others stayed. Those Greeks who fled north were either genuine pro-Nazis, notorious killers or simply too stupid to have taken the precaution of maintaining contacts with Cairo. Most collaborators after all had worked with the occupiers out of convenience, not conviction. After the war, Tsalakoglu, Logothopoulos and Rallos were arrested. Tsalakoglu and Rallos died in prison. Logothopoulos was released in 1951 and would pass away 10 years later. I hope you find this video interesting. If you like to learn about Greece during World War II, I have another video for you. It is right here. Let me know what you thought of this video. Leave a comment below. Give this video a like. Share it with your friends. If you want to support me, you can do that via Patreon, via PayPal. And best wishes from this beautiful viewpoint overlooking Athens, Greece.